Rod, thank you for joining us. I just uh, say hello to everybody first. Okay, say hello, everybody. <laughs> hello, everybody. Okay. I love you. Yeah, there you go. I want to start this off with a little one or two minute intro. There's some background I think that's going to be important because the message you're going to give us, the messages you're going to give us is important to almost everyone listening. Now, not everyone may not have been dealing with cancer as you are, but they are dealing with a number of issues, lack of peace, for example, which can devolve into <coughs> many <coughs> kinds of issues, including physical disease type issues. But what we did, you were telling me this is some months ago, that you have very advanced cancer, very high numbers and all of that. And in many cases, the doctors are concerned or, or wonder why you're still with us, but here you are kicking around, doing your thing and everything else. And we had a very in-depth session with unseen therapists, getting down to stuff that most people either don't want to look at or don't realize they have, but we were looking at guilt things and really deep anger things and stuff like that, that you were willing to go there. Okay. And so we went there. Unseen therapy helps with some stuff. We got launched, my opinion, my way of seeing it, into some extraordinary things. Now, in the meantime, over the last several months, what I want to explore with you is the approaches to peace, that's my way of saying it, <coughs> that you have come across, <coughs> your experiences along this line. Now, what I want to say here is with the unseen therapist, our ultimate goal is not necessarily to get beyond a particular physical ailment. That is, that's nice. And that happens a lot. Okay. We're really looking to turn the corner on our own personal peace. And that you have done with many experiences. Rod, may I have an amen? Amen. <laughs> Now that's just that's just me talking. So you wrote me this email, okay? And I've got some little highlight things on it and so on. <clears throat> and you said short interview, short overview, I mean. I'm experiencing sensations alone and with other people that are both wonderful and extraordinary, while at the same time being quite overwhelming. I have seen at least a couple of hundred miracles since we communicated. Now, before we recorded, you were telling me about one of those. You were at a restaurant having breakfast here. And other people were in the restaurant. And you were motivated. You were getting messages from unseen therapists, Holy Spirit. My interpretation, anyway. Okay. Yeah. To communicate <clears throat> with these other people. They don't know you from a load of snow. But somehow or other, you've got a message that's necessary to tell them. And I know one of those, you went to a, you know, like a business manager. Tell that story, would you? Just tell that one story. The one about the card and all that? Yeah. You mean? yeah. You, you, said, you said there were seven people, seven people all together that you gave these messages to independently. But mm -hmm. tell, just tell, talk about that one. Well, there was a man, and I'd met him once briefly years before with, because he was with a friend of mine. And we were talking, and all of a sudden, I get this nudge, you know, and, and a lot of the religious people, I think, call it word of knowledge. 
But it's not like that. All I hear is, get up. So I get up. Walk to that table. So I walk to that table. Deliver the message. I don't know what the message is. Just do it. So I walk over the table. <clears throat> well, I, I, sometimes a lot of details get kind of, it's been crazy. This is all day long. So, and we're talking and all of a sudden, boom. And I just tell him what he's go, dealing with right then. And, and he just goes, oh my God, how do you know that? Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Go back to the video. What is he dealing with? Because you, you told me before. What was your message to him? He's at a bridge. You're standing at a bridge. You're a very successful businessman. And you feel that God is calling you to walk across that bridge and potentially not be a successful business any man, businessman anymore. Uh, and maybe even give all your money away. And um, you're having this call sort of like, you know, in the old days. And there was more detail than that. Um, and he just stared at me. He said, how do you possibly know that? It's true, but how do you know that? I, I don't know. Well, there was, more, there was more to that, right, as I recalled it. It was, like, it was like you go across that bridge, the purpose being not to be this businessman anymore. Like that's sucking up too much of your true energy, my, my phrase, okay? Mm -hmm. You need to help those who needs your help, not with money necessarily, but with guidance, with peace. Now I'm putting my own words in this, but am I saying it right? And so somehow I'm using, I, 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 I'm somehow Lisa and I have ended up with a messenger ministry. It's happening every day. And like in the, in the restaurant, seven different tables. People all came when they left, came over and hugged Lisa, hugged me. The manager came out. And, you know, I, I mean, that has to be kind of weird what he's watching. So I thought we might politely be told that there's a nicer restaurant later. <laughs> and he hugged me. He said, thank you. He said, there's so much. I guess he has a background with church or something. There's so much Holy Spirit energy in here. It's beautiful. I'm just going to, I well, guess he's not. Yeah. The beauty of this from my point of view, and I hope from the point of view of those listening in, is that just to use this one businessman who is likely entertaining these thoughts because you were telling him what he's entertaining. You hit him someplace on a bullseye of a target that maybe he even he hasn't admitted yet, but been thinking about and so on. Okay. And therein lie the real riches, not necessarily the money riches. It's another kind of riches, more important riches. You hit him at a real place. Now, I don't know the other stories, but the mere fact that you would get up go to say these messages not knowing what they were until you got there and then they sort of showed up, rolled out of your face. Am I saying it right? Yeah, I okay. think so. And you hit, apparently, all of them right on target, right on the bullseye. They knew what you were saying. You just put in words what they needed to hear impactfully enough that they go up to a stranger and give you a hug when you're done. Do I have all that right? Yes. All right. Now, that can only come, my view, Rod, from someone who is dipping into a level of spiritual messaging, a level of spiritual peace that is beyond what most of us are able to experience, and I am guessing, need your input on this, I am guessing that the cancer, the advanced cancer 
is moving you in that direction. Now you tell me if I'm on target or not. Just, I don't want to be dramatic, but if the angel showed up and said, how would you feel if you never had cancer? I said, I'd rather be dead. It has broken my arrogant ego into pieces. I don't know what to do except love people and give them peace. And we're sitting at a table. There's lunch, not our breakfast anymore. And this lady comes walking across the room just like John Wayne strutting. I went, wow, she's walking right at us, Lise. And she walks up and said, I've been hearing about you, mister. What do you got? I went, wow. I, I don't know, ma'am. Well, what makes you think I got anything? She said, because the people, the, everybody's talking about it. People are coming over, they're sitting at the table, you're doing something, and people are going away. Anything good? I said, man, this is so awkward. Um, I don't know what to say to you, ma'am. I just asked you a question. I guess that's my fallback. She go for it. What do you want more than anything in the world? That's all. That's all I want to know. I would find out later. She's got a fifth degree black belt. She has bench pressed three hundred pounds, and she thinks GI Jane is her favorite movie. <laughs> oh my God! And and. She thinks that she, you can do anything with neurolinguistic programming. Yeah, that's actually a powerful tool, but you cannot do anything with it. And if, if you, I, I kind of hung out with some of the people that were close to the founders and an uh, interesting tool, but it kind of took them down. Um, there's so much going on. Well, there's so anyway, much. Anyway, then he sits down. And she says, I just want to see what you got. And, and then I asked the question. And, and she thought about it. And then she answered honestly. Well, real aggressive, but honestly, I don't like people. They drive me nuts. I need protection from people. And that was so different from everything else she was projecting. Well, somebody who's lifting 300 pounds needs that protection, probably. But go ahead. Got more testosterone than I do. Um, <laughs> and, and mine's running a lot of time around 1,200. I don't know what hers is running at. And that's with taking prostate cancer pills. It's still too high. Anyway, and that's a problem because uh, well, we don't need to talk about that. Um, so I said, you need peace. And she said, okay, well, what do you got? I said, well, you've made it clear. All I've got is peace. I said, I believe the dwelling inside you is the eternal now. And I believe that that will give you peace in every cell of your body. And she said, well, I don't know whether that's true or not. What do you got? And I said, I don't know. But... And then I did something I've only done one other time in my life. And I darn near peed in my pants. I said, in three minutes, every cell in your body is going to be filled and flooded with peace. And you're going to feel it roll through your childhood all the way up to now. And you're going to be awestruck. And you know, beautiful, cocky lady. You telling me that in three minutes, I'm going to be totally filled with peace. Eternal peace, no less. Yes, ma'am. And I, you know, and then some of the pastors in this room, they start coming over because, and then somebody whispers and Lisa's here. I forget the words, but is he really going to go for that? She's, he's never done it before. I have no idea what he's doing. Things are going crazy. 
in a good way, I think. Lisa thinks it's good. I'm a little nervous. So she sat down and she said, can you give me a preview? I said, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'll tell you what, I won't speak. I'll only hum. And when I hum, you'll be filled with peace. And she said, this I got to see. Start. And I know it sounds silly, but Two or three times I've ended up peeing on myself. I got so scared. Um, my macho memories just really get beat up. Um, and so she, I don't know what to do. And I, I want to turn back and ask Lise, but I know if I turn back, it gigs up. And it probably take about two minutes if you want. I'll just hum the prayer that, that I hum for her. Or I'll do half of it, whatever you like. Should I try? I don't know if it'll come across on this, but I looked at her. She said, eyes open or closed? It doesn't matter, man. Open. Let's just look at each other. And out of the blue. Mm-hmm. on the corner of the eyes. Hers or yours? Hers. Uh-huh. Whole face changed from combat to peace. And she looked at me and said, I have been upset with people and, and anxious all my life since I was a little girl. And I have always only had one thing that helped. I sang to myself silent night. Day later, a pastor called me and said, huge impact. You what? Huge impact on her life. Huge impact. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see it coming. Well, what's interesting, if I may interject for the moment, you did, I'm presuming, you did not know that in childhood i'd never seen the lady before yeah, okay yeah that that's that song resonated but somehow or other humming that song showed up like it was customized to her it was like the unseen therapist gave you that to do and the the um odds of that happening out of all the millions of possibility is way beyond coincidence. And I think the important, an important message here, you have many important messages, Rod, but an important message here that I want viewers to understand is that when we get to a point where we're really listening to our spiritual dimension, which we're calling the unseen therapist, but you can call it Jesus, Holy Spirit, Buddha, higher power, anything you want. When you get to the point where you're really surrendering to it, really listening to it, you don't have to sit there and effort at these things. They will show up if you allow it. Whoop. <laughs> I tried to turn an extra light on. I fell down. Sorry. Okay. Um, 
yes. Um, but even though it's happening seemingly nonstop, it's not becoming familiar. It's always spontaneous. And I... I usually feel pretty confident when I'm on a project. I don't know what I'm doing. It's like, now this is a, not accurate, but I can't find words. It's like Rod died. And this kind of dirt encrusted butterfly showed up when he broke the chrysalis. And with the, with the butterfly's beautiful spiritual message my input. It should most uh, I am um, now wh while these miracles are happening by the hundreds everywhere we go sometimes I have to stay home all day. I'm afraid to go out. I don't have a lot of energy and and now I mean all this in the last 90 days people are calling up and saying how much money do you need to start a church I said when do we need more churches I mean we just need more like gatherings and um, and but I'm fine I mean I love Jesus but, I mean, this is a radical thing I'm saying. God is within you. You absolutely, unless you want, don't have to have a, a broker in between. And it doesn't matter. I mean, I fell in love with Jesus a long time ago. But... I don't care what they believe in. I'm, this is working with atheists. And I don't mean afterwards they become Buddhists or Christians. They're still atheists. And they're just sitting there with tears in their eyes. And they're going, there really is a numinous experience available inside people. And I don't, I'm not an evangelist. I don't need to tell them, no, 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 no. This is this or this is that. They're just so happy that they found a peaceful place inside themselves. Mm -hmm. And Everything is kind of going at odd angles. But. OK, this sounds goofy, and if you want to call the mental institution, go ahead. But. I don't think I'm the same person I was last year. And I don't mean that in the scientific way, the cells. I mean, my mind is not the same. Um, all I want to do is love people and offer them access to peace. I don't want to make them rich anymore. I don't, I don't seem to have the gift for Lisa's been laying hands on the people and getting physical responses. Mine are almost always deep. I mean, I'm not, I don't know what mine are, but the result seems to be deep peace, more self-love, but the strongest thing is, and so many people say it, no one has ever loved me or respected me for myself before in my entire life. Now, that's so sad. What were the words? That's so sad. A 40 year old person that has never been loved. Believe me, Rod, sitting in my chair, sitting in my chair, I see that with great frequency, really great frequency. Um, let me, we're gonna close here in a moment, uh, but, but let me do it with a thought or two to explore with you. Number one, you have hundreds of these things to talk about. So we would be here for a week or more going through them. We've got, okay. a, we've got, a, yeah, we've got a smattering we're looking at the essence of it, and you did that beautifully. Now, I have I... one. Go ahead. 
in the midst of all this, Lisa and I are sitting there praying, and we get the idea. Let's start an inner peace ministry for cancer patients. And she says, that's a great idea. And she said, you know, you've got terminal cancer. They've got terminal cancer. She said, you could have it. Well, I don't know who said it. You could have a terminal cancer choir, for God's sakes. <laughs> um, and so I said, well, what do you suggest we do? She said, let's focus on it. We focused on it. First solid church invited us, gave us the whole place for a Saturday afternoon and said, do whatever you want. We're going to invite all our cancer people. And we set up a prayer team. Unusual prayer team, I guess. And Lisa came up with the idea. They sit in row A. Row B is empty. Row C, the patient sit. Row D is empty. Row E, the patient sit. And she said, Let's not make it hierarchical with potentially a lot of males sitting up here going, in the name of God, you know. She said, let's just be with the people. I cried. And so then the priest said, this is great. And I said, you like it? Yeah. He said, do you want any liturgy or any? No, 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 no. This is just peace, inner peace. And he said, well, whatever you want, microphones, cameras, anything, we're in. And, and he said, what, you know, he says, you know, it's Christmas and it's New Year's. So the first day I can give you the whole place is Saturday, the 8th of January. And he said, uh, are you ready? Let's go. By the time we got home, he had already made flyers, pictures, cancer ministry, come for cancer prayers. It started the cancer ministry, which was kind of an odd idea on a cold morning. Lisa said, let's just focus our prayers on cancer patients. And it showed up. Yeah. And now other churches are calling. And well, I yeah. think we're going to find mosques, temples, and everything else, too. I would hope. I would, yeah. hope, I would hope that this starts to flower everywhere but thank you for that let me i there's something i want to mention be before mm -hmm. we close to those listening in because many of those listening in are like you members of our optimal eft course and others are interested in it and this kind of thing but well, i'd say a lot of good things about it well okay <laughs> but let, let me just i'm going to make a a point and a highlight here it's a little unusual in that most people think, they're conditioned to think that a um, healing process would say, well, I've got a given ailment. I have a sore shoulder. I have a headache. I'm mad at my father. I have an anger management problem. I have cancer. I have the da-da-da. And that's the issue I want fixed. Okay. And that's a condition. That's what, we're, that's what people want. So they'll come here with that idea. How do you fix my whatever? All right. When they get here, they start to learn, well, it's very possible to fix your whatever, but that's not where we are aiming. We are aiming at the very place, Rod, you're talking about. We are aiming at personal peace. We are looking at things you're harboring inside and have since typically childhood, anger, grief, guilt, all these other barriers to the awareness of love's presence, which is really within God or the unseen therapist or Jesus or whatever that you think is the important spiritual dimension isn't out there. It's in here, and we want to uncover it. And the real benefit here is that peace. Yes, a lot of other things can happen because of that. But the real benefit is that peace and the ability to radiate that, which is what you're doing. That's my word. But you're radiating that 
to others. It is flowering. The church, church, the church type thing you're doing. Okay, I'll put it that way. The flowering of that is a beautiful thing, but it comes from recognizing this peace within which we have buried. The unseen therapist, God, Jesus, higher, all of that is here. It's here. We have we have very powerful telescopes that can look out into the skies way beyond what the eyes can see, okay? And nobody has ever looked out there and saw God, okay? God is, God is somewhere. God is within. We are God. It just does not appear that way. But we're moving in that direction. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Rod, for showing us that possibility. That was I said that pretty well, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> and anything you, else you want to say before we draw the curtain here? It's just whoever's out there watching. Please do not believe the stuff that got put in your head when you were a child. I don't care if you weigh 400 pounds and you are an Olympic with act, an Olympic acne contest winner. You have a beautiful soul. And you have everything you need inside you to love yourself, to love your fellow human being, brothers and sisters. And if you so choose to love God, how you love God is your business. Mother Teresa, St. Francis, I don't know. What your tradition of religion is, that's your business too. But please, don't be afraid. Absolutely everything is inside you. And if you are still and slow down, the great promise is that you will find peace. And nobody ever promised me that I'd be healed of cancer. But I felt that the spirit inside me promised me peace. And for the most part, it's coming. Sometimes I still get scared. Um, and, you know, I would never say this in public before, but sometimes when I walk up, a while back I walked up to somebody and I ended up, well, not, not, not just out of fear or something, but my body's going through a lot. I ended up pooping in my pants while I was giving a message. And, and I came back and Lisa said, what's wrong? And I told her and she said, that's not so bad, is it? <laughs> they don't know and they're happy. Yeah. Now uh, let's go home and change clothes. Okay. So anyway, it's full time now. All right. Until I grow wings get locked up or heal, heal, physically healed. One of those three things is going to happen this year. Right. Rod, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope those listening in really got the message we're trying to get across. Kisses to you. Kisses to all those listening in. Peace. To Peace. Everyone.